हेलो एवरीवन माय सेल्फ प्रतीक कुमार तिवारी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर आईएमटी कॉलेज ऑफ फार्मेसी ग्रेटर नोएडा माय टॉपिक इज सेल डेथ नाउ वी मूव फॉरवर्ड डिस्कस व्हाट इज सेल दिस इज अ टेबल ऑफ कंटेंट दिस इज अ फॉलोइंग मेजर टॉपिक्स व्हिच वी कवर अंडर द इन इन दिस वीडियो फर्स्ट वन इज वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज सेल डेथ then after we understand how many types of cell death is there then we discuss necrosis apoptosis and respectively their mechanism now we further move and discuss what is cell death basically cell death is a process by in which body remove in appropriate cell to maintain the constant cell volume in other words we can say body remove the cell to maintain constant volume for the sake of homeostasis what is homeostasis homeostasis means equilibrium means body try to maintain the equilibrium so body easily able to perform the normal physiological function now we move forward to cell death cell death basically are two types first one is apoptosis and second one is necrosis apoptosis basically a natural phenomena when cell death happens because in apoptosis cell death happen because of when there is a biochemical change in the cells and this cell death is also called as suicidal cell death or programmed cell death which is performed by a body itself for removing the inappropriate cells now there is a second one is necrosis necrosis basically a killing of cells either by destruction or decay it is a not a programmed cell death like apoptosis it is a unprogrammed cell death necrosis happens due to cell injuries inflammation accidents different kind of trauma electrical shocks and by physical agents or chemical agent right now we have to understand how the apoptosis and necrosis happen suppose we as we use you see on the screen there is a normal cell if we talking about necrosis what happens due to injury after injury cell get form a structure blab like structure this is a blab like structure basically and after that what happens after the blabbing the cell membrane get ruptures and all the cyto materials or cyto substance which is present inside the cells is get released and accumulate in the neighboring surrounding cells due to the accumulation of this rupture cyto chemicals what happen due to accumulation nearby cells also get affected and it causes injury to the nearby cells as well but in case of apoptosis what happens as i already told it is a natural as i already as i already told apoptosis is a natural phenomenon cell death happens basically due to some biochemical changes and what happens in apoptosis there is also formation of the small blood after the blabbing the dna get fragmented the, this step is called fragmentation in this step what happens dna get fragmented and organelles move toward the bleep like this and this is this structure is called bleep as i already told so what happens organelles get moved towards the bleep and dna break into fragment in during this step right after just 
what happens this fragment get break into a small bodies and this small body is known as apoptotic body after the formation of apoptotic body what happens due to uh, as you know this is a natural cell death mechanism so body already the cell send a signal to phagocyto phagocytotic cells to so what they they does they comes after just when the micro apoptotic body forms phagocytotic uh, phagocytotic cell is come and engulf the apoptotic body and that's how the cell death happens in apoptosis now we discuss distinct modalities of cell death right so in apoptosis for what happens first there is a rounding up of the cell second after that there is a reduction of cellular and nuclear volume means they in basically this is called pycnosis and what happens in during pycnosis the there is a condensation of chromatin and all the genetic materials and there is a reduction in the cellular and nuclear volume due to that condensation there is a there is a reduction in the cellular volume and nuclear volume after that there is a nuclear fragmentation why this terms carrier axis it is called what happens in carrier axis basically that condensed fragment what happens they get dissolved okay then after there is a minor modification the cytoplasmic organelles and this uh, after the modification of cytoplasmic organelles what happens plasma membrane get blab and that blabbing after blabbing there's a fragmentation there's a movement of uh, organelles to the blabbing side blabbing structures and after that there's a formation of apoptotic body and at the end there's a cell death, right so this is all about apoptosis now we discuss about autophagy what happens in autophagy there is a lack of chromatin condensation in autophagy there is no, no chromatin condensation there's a massive vocalization right massive vocalization is there after that the vocalization this double membrane structure get accumulated and autophagy happens now we discuss in brief about necrosis in necrosis what happens after the injury there is a cytoplasmic swelling which we call oncosis after oncosis what happens there is a rupture of plasma membrane and the rupture of plasma membrane what it does it causes the there's a swelling in the organelles and after all that there's a release it get released from and after that there's a moderate chromatin condensation and there's a, which leads to necrosis right so these are distinct modalities of cell death now we discuss the difference between apoptosis like where in apoptosis there is a role of mitochondria and cytochrome c but in necrosis in case of necrosis there is no role of mitochondria now the second differentiation is there is a no leak of lysosomal enzyme but in case of necrosis there is a leak of lysosomal enzyme because why this leak happens because there is a cell injury due to incident but in apoptosis there is a programmed cell death so there is a no leakage a body uh, causes the cell death step by step so the second is there's a characteristic nuclear changes we can easily we can uh, characterize that particular nuclear change in case of apoptosis but in the necrosis there's a no nucleic changes we can observe there's a nuclei lost is there in apoptosis there's a formation of apoptotic body takes place but there's a no in case of necrosis there is no uh, such apoptotic bodies Form or no such body is formed. DNA cleavage in case of uh, apoptosis happened, but in case of necrosis, no DNA cleavage is, is there. In case of apoptosis, there is activation of a specific protease enzyme, but in case uh, there, but in case of uh, necrosis, there is no activation of protease enzyme. Right. Now there is a regulatable process, and uh, this is not a regulated regulatable process because uh, why it is regulatable? Because in apoptosis, everything uh, happens through a signaling. 
so body can regulate this process according to the requirement according to need but in the case of necrosis there is no regulation there is a, this is a kind of immediate injury uh, due to trauma and all the physical agents and chemical agents so there is no regulation it is and second this evolutionary conserved this is conserved because apoptosis is conserved conserved in nature but uh, necrosis is not and last one the last difference is dead cell uh, is ingested by neighboring cells in case of apoptosis basically they are these cells are phagocytox, uh, phagocytic cells but in case of necrosis there uh, the dead cell is ingested by neutrophils and macrophages right so now moving to next slide so ne next we discuss yeah so first we have to learn what is necrosis necrosis basically it is a greek word which means death it is a death of a cell basically as i already told in this video it is a death of cells of living organism necrosis happens maybe in a single cell or in a group of cell or in a part uh, cell right necrosis basically is a happens is a so some total of morphological changes that follow the cell death in living tissue or organ last one is necrosis can be defined as cell death caused by loss of membrane integrity right due to loss of membrane uh, membrane integrity intracellular organelle gets swelled and uh, there's a atp depletion is there which leads to influx of calcium and this influx of calcium further trigger the protease lysosomal enzymes and this this cell gets swelled and there's a cell death okay so this is a basic uh, understanding about necrosis now how, what happens what changes is visual in necrosis we discussed that in uh, in this slide right what happens in cytoplasmic there's a uh, in, uh, in case of cytoplasmic change there's an increased number of isotopes we can observe cytoplasm looks glassy in appearance there is granularization in cytoplasm mitochondria gets swelled and there is maybe a calcification is there in this accumulation of calcium now we can what we see in a nuclear uh, there's a nuclear changes as well what in karyolysis is there it means there's a dissolution of chromatin condensed chromatin and pycnosis is, uh, is there basically as i already told pycnosis is basically what in this breakdown of uh, uh, condensation of chromatin it is a basically irreversible condensation in the nucleus of the cell okay and carrier axis basically a destruction of uh, destructive fragment of nucleus of a dying cell where its chromatin is disrupted irregular throughout the cytoplasm now what happens in necrotic cell death occurs generally in response to severe changes in physiology right continue example hypoxia is there hypoxia means there's a uh, is a decrease of oxygen level next is ischemia in case of ischemia what happens there's a there's a decrease in blood flow hypoglycemia is there decrease in the glycemic level toxin exposure uh, exposure to reactive oxygen motifs free radicals we can say environmental factors like uh, extreme heat temperature change maybe they are the temperature is too high or too to cold is there so necrosis happens over there because it causes the direct cell injury necrosis generally considered to be a passive process because uh, necrosis need no protein synthesis so this uh, that's why it's called as a passive process now we discuss apoptosis apoptosis basically follows two mechanisms first one is intrinsic and extrinsic if you're talking about extrinsic pathway so what has what happens over there we have to understand what happens when tnf alpha binds to tnf receptor which is present extracellularly just after binding of tnf molecule tnf alpha what happens 
there is activation of death domain trad and fat right basically this is this are all are the domain and death domain basically responsible for the activation of caspase which is responsible for cell death so what happens just after binding of tnf alpha to tnf receptor uh, there is activation of death domain this death domain further activates trad and fat and this which leads to activation of pro caspase 8 pro caspase is basically a called executioner caspase means as a name suggests executioner means it executes the apoptosis right after the activation of pro caspase it's activate caspase right just after activation of pro caspase there's activation of pro caspase 3 which activates caspase 3 caspase 3 is called sorry caspase 8 called ex initiator caspase and caspase 8 3 called executioner caspase and this caspase 3 uh, further execute above process right in now we discuss intrinsic pathway what happens in intrinsic pathway just after coming of apoptotic signal signal goes and activate p53 this p53 goes inhibit bclx bcl2 and mcl1 what is bcl2 bclx and mcl1 basically this is a anti apoptotic protein not right as a name says anti apoptotic means this protein helps in the help cell cells to prevent from apoptosis so just after the getting the apoptotic signal p53 activate and it's inhibit bcl2 bclx mcl1 that is an anti apoptotic protein this leads to the activation of bats and bat which is of two moieties which goes and what they do is this leads to the opening of vacuoles on the mitochondria right what happens here just after back and backs get come and it's happen the vacuoles of mitochondria there is a release of cytochrome c this cytochrome c go meet with cytochrome c get released and meet with apaf1 and bind to the apaf1 and there's a presence of autosome, autosome is there. So cytochrome go bind with APAF1. What is that? It goes and bind with aptosome. Apoptosome. Just after binding with apoptosome, what it does, it may it goes and activates caspase 9. And this caspase 9, what is different between intrinsic and extrinsic pathway? In extrinsic pathway, what happens? The Initiator caspase is caspase 9, but in case of intrinsic pathway, initiator caspase is caspase 9. And further, it activates executioner caspase, that is 3 and 7. And this executioner caspase again leads to the apoptosis. Right. Now we discuss the importance of apoptosis. First, we, we, before discussing the importance of apoptosis, we have to understand the general characteristic of apoptosis. It is a normal phenomenon. As I said, it is a very natural phenomenon to maintain the cell, normal cellular volume. Uh, so, it is a basically a natural phenomenon occurring frequently, basically in multicellular organisms. Thus, those cells that undergo the apoptosis die neatly without damaging the neighboring cells. But in case of necrosis, uh, necrosis, what we observe, it causes the damage to a nearby cells because after the rupture of cell membrane, cyto chemicals get released and accumulate to the nearby neighbor cells. So it damage the nearby cells in case of necrosis, but, they, but in case of apoptosis, it doesn't happen. So, as there's no damaging to a nearby cell, there's no damage, there's no inflammation in apoptosis. But in case of necrosis, there's an inflammation because inflammation. Okay. So, now we discuss the importance of apoptosis. So, apoptosis first plays a very, uh, you know, important role to maintain the 
cell integrity. So those cells which affect the integrity of the cell uh, of the organism, so they will remove that particular cell. Okay, like example, cell infected with virus. In case if the cell is infected by through with a virus, if there is no apoptosis, what happens? It in uh, the virus get replicated and it infect the nearby cell, nearby surroundings or organs or tissues, and and pro propagate in the same fashion, right? So second one is cell with DNA damage. If DNA damage cell is not removed, what it does? It alter the physiological function of the body. Then third, oh, apoptosis play a vital role in cancerous cell, right? So this is the major point why the apoptosis is important. The last one, if there's a no lack of apoptosis, there's a, uh, there's an incomplete differentiation of a division of toes and all the, you know, say uh, body parts and cell. There's a, uh, apoptosis is the only process which helps in the differentiation of two toes. If there's a lack, of, lack so this differentiation is not completely happened, right? So that's all about cell death, its type, its mechanism, and its, and its importance. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.